Times with Mr. Price Home. We have been looking for the best local food blogger. These are passionate cooks who have their own blogs on the internet, sharing their recipes and food experiences with the whole wide world. And today, we find out who's the best. Bloggers faced a grueling elimination heat, competing for a place in the semi finals. The judges voted seven through. In the semi finals, the judges scored the most points to Christy Snell with her blog, Food Monger. I think what I've learned from the show is to take what I am good at and to run with it. Uh, the judges mentioned that I take great photos and I think that I'm going to focus on that and try and improve them. And also what I've learned is to take certain comments not to heart. Sometimes people can say things to you and they can make you quite upset and perhaps despondent. Um, instead, I'm going to take the advice and rather look at it constructive and feel inspired. Janice Trepepi with her blog, Janice Trepepi. I think what I've learned to un 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 dinner divas is um, I can work well under pressure. I've learned that I need to think a little bit more out the box. Uh, I tend to be a very a good little girl and just follow instructions. So sometimes it's good to just interpret things your own way and put your own stamp on food. And Annel Portrieter with her blog Life is a Zoo Biscuit. This is the last episode of um, Dinner Divas and the uitslag for today was gegeven and I am so thankful that this is the end. I am so gedaan, but I am also so opgewonden and my son is very smart. I have learned to be more creative, to be absolutely on my feet and to be under under great pressure to work. And in in various come the people and in various I have learned um, cost gaan oor mense en dit gaan oor vriendskap. They became the top three, competing for the most points in three challenges. I think Anel is one of those characters who is going to showcase what South African cooking is about and simply how being yourself is what makes for a spectacular story. And the food is genuine, it is full of excitement, she's fun. And uh, the show has, this show has shown you know, that she's capable of doing something even greater. Janice is a very special lady, and she has displayed skill, she has displayed innovation. She cooked the food that she loves, that she's familiar with, and that is what will attract people to her site and her blog, because you know what you're going to get. You know you're going to get this lovely Italian food. I think that what was important here in this final is that we had Christy, who is so different. Foodmonger's blog is absolutely beautiful. It's got a lovely mood about it. It's very styled, it's very romantic, it's very pretty. And today, the blogger with the highest score overall will become the ultimate dinner diva. She will be the judge on the next season, be part of a book deal, Enjoy a welcome breakaway. Receive 25,000 rands worth of Whirlpool kitchen appliances, as well as 50,000 rand cash. Here you are, 
for the last time in the Dinner Diva Kitchen. <laughs> Our top three food blogger. Are you excited to be here? Yes, yes. Very, very. Fantastic. You have cooked and blogged your way through some tough challenges and against some serious food bloggers. You faced a variety of food experts who judged your efforts and blogs. And you've had to listen to their comments. Some good and some, well, not so good. And I know you are ready to hear who the judges chose as the ultimate dinner diva of 2012. So, shall we get out of the kitchen? Oh, yes, yes please. please. <laughs> We are cooking with Mr. Price home. You're watching Dinner Divas with Mr. Price home. Before we get to the results to see who will be crowned the ultimate Dinner Diva of 2012, let's do a little recap. You survived our quick-fire elimination rounds against other top food bloggers. You had to cook a typical meal from your blog and serve it to expert foodies whose names were withheld from you. And because you are so well known, they did not know whose food they were eating or voting for. The salad looks a bit tired now. Perhaps it's um, been it dressed too juicy? early. But there's kind of two sauces. It's all rather a mess. After a few seconds, you got the red wine, I suppose, mm. in the other sort, the onion sauce. Mm. It makes it quite an, uh, an unsightly concoction, two sauces. The goat's nice and tender. It's got so much flavor. It's delicious. It really is a very well-rounded, fragrant dish. Zabaglione with amaretti biscuits. Lovely. I like the addition of the strawberries. There's that kind of sour fruitiness coming through. Then you had to prepare a culinary feast in three hours against seven serious semi-finalists. And you came out tops. In the finals, we saw you sweating it out in some tough challenges. And here we are, ready to reveal our ultimate dinner diva of 2012. But first, let's take a look at your journeys. And now, in your elimination round, you cooked against Barry Harber of the blog What's Cooking. And you made your family favorite chicken with orzo and a beautifully deconstructed mock tart. Your meal won the judges' hearts. And she did mention that um, her blog is about engaging in um, appetizing and colorful food, and that's exactly what we've got over here. The kind of blogger that would encourage other people who feel that they have the same kind of inkling to blog too. And they thought that Barry's cooking, although delicious, was stuck in a comfort zone. They felt food bloggers should be more daring and innovative. And I always believe that if you're going to make this time and this effort, you want to try and bring a little extra into what you're doing and you know make it easy to navigate and easy to find things so it's not just one long list. In the semi-finals the judges thought you created an extraordinary Indian feast using goat's meat. That meal blew them away. It's delicious. It's got so much flavor. This is something that any blog reader would love to stumble upon. And your risky decision to use goat paid off. Yet and now you seemed concerned from the start that the judges are not seeing what you are capable of. Why? I think it's because I'm not chef trained and I'm a blogger. So I think it's just a touch of humbleness and a lack of confidence. That makes sense. Janice, in the quick elimination round, you cooked against Tuli Gugela, the blog Mzanzi style cuisine. Her chicken gizzards and cow's heels did not win the judges' hearts. It's tough. 
very chewy. It's very dry. But your traditional family recipes stole the show. Mm. I like it. My father is nice and crunchy. And I like the fact that the filling has definitely got a bit of sauce to it. It's not too sweet. In the semi-final, you faced Christy and Nina. Nina celebrated being a woman with a tea party and Christy celebrated Christmas. You cooked a delicious feast for a wedding rehearsal and that tied the knot for you with the judges. The seasoning is perfect. There's nothing else in the way of, of, of the flavors. It smells good, it looks good, it tastes brilliant. Together with Christie's Christmas, you scored enough points to go through to the finals. Janice, you always looked like you were taking everything in your stride. Is it because you mostly stayed in your comfort zone? Italian cooking? Um, when I cook in my in my zone, in my genre, I do kind of, I, I sort of settle down once the nerves are gone, settle in, and I kind of just went on automatic. I had this everything in my mind, exactly what I should be cooking when. Well, we saw it, and it obviously worked for you. Thanks. <laughs> and Christy, in your elimination round, you cooked against the best and veteran food blogger Nina T. from the blog My Easy Cooking. Being a fairly new blogger, you could have thrown in the tea towel, but you cooked your heart out and with Nina, went through to the semi-finals. Both of you are going through to the semi-finals, yay! 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 <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you, thank you, well done. In the semi-finals, you had to cook for a special occasion and you celebrated Christmas. And never let the decorations out of the bag. I made snow globes. I do not have my own Christmas decorations because I've recently moved to Cape Town and I left all of that stuff with my mom. They're quite awful. I mean, they were like really kitsch. But the judges' scores put you in the finals. The, the duck is cooked beautifully. The meat itself is nice and tender. I'm absolutely in I heaven. think it would be a, a perfect ending to a drink. The judges were harsh with but you seem to agree with a lot of their comments. The letter seems to be quite firm. So that's the pilling that I was given. Did you try it, by the way? I did. You find it a little under? Under what? Cooked. It's a little dense, I'll give you that. Thank you. Surely you must disagree with something. I did agree with a lot of what they said. I think sometimes their comments were a bit harsher than what was necessary. No character. It lacks imagination. It was obviously a flop which you tried to Put together again, but that is a disaster. It's not perfect, but the oh, flavor I get. I no. need it on the end of no, the spoon. I like the flavors. Moment. I like what she attempted to do. There. No, no, I don't think it's a disaster. It's it a disaster is. It's complete. If I you serve that to anybody who wants to, you know, to learn something about enjoying eating, they would find you a disgrace. Well, it wasn't what I wanted. That's not what I had planned, and I had to serve something, so I did the best that I could. And I'm very grateful for that. I doubt that you're grateful. I but I don't have to be great, I just have to tell you honest truth, that's a bit. I mean, I'm not a chef, I'm a food blog and I cook at home and I cook quite simple basic food and I think sometimes they wanted a lot more out of me than at this moment that I can give them. It does make sense and as long as you take it home and you, you, you take it as constructive. No, of course, of course. No. Okay, so let's talk finals. You had to battle some tough challenges. In the first challenge, you had to cook an ordinary family weekday meal in 45 minutes from a basket of ingredients. It did not all go well. Look at that, it just sticks to the I'm just going to leave it like it doesn't really have to be grow. You should not serve undercooked collect to anybody. The whole thing has got that great <coughs> flavour. I'm just thinking it's the finals of a competition, <coughs> cooking competition for bloggers, and I got meatballs. The reason why I made meatballs is that I always thought that that's quite a homey meal to make, and the brief was to cook a family meal, a meal for the family. Maybe that's why we got meatballs, because cooking without a recipe is not within the repertoire. I've seen the fries in the moment I've my mouth and I've seen the fries and I've seen the fries and I've seen the fries. I'm a little disappointed um, with the range of ingredients that are available. And now we have two contestants who have made us meatballs. A salad, actually, to me, was the winner. 
and it's a pity that it wasn't the main dish because the meatballs yet again featured and uh, I thought they were pretty awful. In the second challenge, you all had to prepare the same three recipes. Very little went right in this challenge. I was trying to do too much at one time. My initial hollandaise was scrambled egg. I'm afraid that hollandaise just let you down a little bit. Yeah. My eggs were absolutely perfect, but I mean, you should be able to poach an egg. Uh, it's not very difficult. Some of them were not looking as pretty as I wanted them, so I cooked about seven eggs. Okay, that one looks like it's not too bad. The sorbet, I've never made a sorbet before, uh, so I'm quite excited to to give a sorbet a go. And I see you've kept the seeds. Is that not a bit of the rind? Maybe it's a bit of the rind. I just oh, strain out the seeds. That's definitely yeah, a guava seed. That was a guava seed. It's the grainy consistency, it's not seeds. Right. In the last of the three final challenges, you could choose just about any ingredient you wanted. Some things went right, and some things went wrong. I'm not sure how many things went right today. A lot went wrong for me. Um, firstly, my pastry seemed to have not rested long enough. When I tried to roll it out, it just stuck to the marble. It was like a, a short crust sweet pastry. I managed to just push it into the pastry casing because time was pressing. I baked it in the oven, and it started to crack. And then, because it had cracks in it, the so much because it all oozed everywhere. It was just dismal. Christy, your tart flopped. Okay. My main course was kudu sirloin. I was just thinking of doing something different again, and that is me as a person. I decided to bring my own kudu. It's as tough as old boots. The flavour is actually of nothing. Really? All I've got is the sauce and some leather. And I think it's not your fault, it's the meat. Yes. Not good enough. The judges caused some high and some low moments. I just lost a lot of confidence after that when I saw that happen. I suddenly thought, okay, you know, a creme brulee is very similar. It's an egg custard. This is the same thing, it just has granadilla. So then I put that in there, created a little biscuit, and then I had some chocolate that drizzled on. So it was almost like a deconstruction of the existing top that had flopped. And you cook your heart. Mr. Price home. You're watching Dinner Divas with Mr. Price home. And now, finally, we are able to look at the points and announce the ultimate Dinner Diva of 2012. Here goes, ladies. Good luck. The two highest scores over the three challenges went to Annel with her blog, Life is a Zoo Biscuit. And Janice Trapepi with her blog, Janice Trapepi. Christy. You are one of our top three bloggers, and in spite of some nasty comments about your food on that day, the judges are full of praise for your talents as a food blogger. This meal has been somewhat different. The meat was cooked perfectly, the potatoes were crispy, and... Uh... I think there was a lot of good execution in, in all of it. It was well thought through. The recipes were well written and the products were well used in an efficient way. I think that's an excellent holiday. Woo! I love you! 
Now the nigga is I wasn't going to give you if you wanted. <laughs> no, please. Now I think there's a lovely Hollandaise, nicely seasoned, very buttery, but not overly buttery. And I like the colour. Now I think you have a wonderful opportunity to explore a whole new area of food buttery to your photography. And I think you'll find you'll have an ability to tell a story about food through your photography. Now there are two left. Janice and Anal. Here goes, ladies, for challenge one in the finals, the family meal. The judges scored the most points, two. Janice Trepepi. Then, in the second challenge, we have given you three identical versions of well-known recipes. These are buttermilk crumpets, local eggs Benny, and guava sorbet. I can reveal that the winner of the second challenge is... Anel! <laughs> now, who is the winner of challenge three and the ultimate dinner diva of 2012? I can reveal that the judges scored this food blogger the highest because of her passion, quirkiness, and her daring and gutsy approach to food and life. And she is... And now life is a super Somebody's regained ours, my passion and my love for food, and it's just amazing. <laughs> and I'm not eating two biscuits today. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> no way. Yes, just for the fun of it. <laughs> oh, I feel like a princess <laughs> now. I'm a real diva. <laughs> the chance to stay and dine like a diva for a two-day breakaway at the fabulous Upper East Side Hotel in Cape Town. SMS the word HOTEL to 34022. Life cannot get more divalicious. Was a real feast with Mr. Price home.